Hello, welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This is episode number 63, and today is the 23rd of June. Uh, so we're recording this at 9 p.m. on Monday, like we do almost every week at 9.30 on Monday. And this week's going to be a lot of pre-recorded videos. So our, our main thing we're going to talk about this week is... Eagle CAD, and I'm going to do two segments, one this week and one next week on Eagle CAD. This week we're going to actually walk through creating a schematic, and I'm going to take an old schematic that I did in a different piece of software uh, that we I no longer like to use and uh, convert it to Eagle CAD. So you're going to watch me do it live, and the reason I pre-recorded it instead of doing it live right here uh, is because I wanted to fast forward through a few things because it gets kind of tedious as I start duplicating the work. So I, I kind of fast forward to make the segment uh, a little shorter and it's already very long. So um, we'll get into that in a few minutes. A few things before we get started, though, I do want to appreciate everybody. I do. I, don't say, I do appreciate really everybody uh, spreading the word. It's uh, been growing and that's a good thing. So I like to thank everybody every week for telling your friends and spreading it around. Uh, we're getting more and more downloads. The Roku app's just downloading like crazy and uh, it's growing quick that way as well. So um, all good on that side. Also, if you're buying things on Amazon, definitely appreciate that. And if you're not know what I'm talking about, if you go to our website, there's a link, a uh, little banner at the top. You click on that and you can buy anything. You can buy, you know, electronic toys or household items, whatever you normally buy on Amazon uh, using that link. And we just get a little bit of percentage from it. We don't, you don't cost anything extra for you. It's just, you know, the same, same for you. It just helps us to get things to grow on our side. So we definitely appreciate that. And all of our shows are available on Roku and you can get us on the podcast directories. We're on YouTube. You can go to the tech Zen TV website. Uh, you can pretty much connect with us many different ways Just search for tech-n.tv and uh, you'll find us all right so um a few things uh this this week i said we're going to talk about doing the schematics and um and then next week we're going to talk about actually designing the boards and when we're done with this segment today in the show notes i'll actually put a pdf of what, we, what i did this this week but next week i'll put the whole eagle file in there so you can download if you want to download the free trial of eagle and play with it you have it and i'm going to put a few other boards so we're going to put some of our button boards out there and some of our um uh, breakout boards that we use inside of our boxes that way you can look and see and play with eagle and kind of get a feel of what all it can do um because it's it's kind of daunting when you first get into it i've been doing it probably about six months now um i've converted almost all of the drawings from my old systems up to eagle i still have three or four and this one that one that i did for this segment was actually one that i haven't done yet um so that's why i, I picked that one but i'll give you a couple other ones next week and you can pull, pull down and, and play with you know the board designs you can redesign your own boards with the schematics and move the schematics around things like that uh for, for this week i'll just give you the pdf of what i created out in the show notes so um before we go too much farther i'm gonna go ahead and start the segment like i said the segment's uh a little long it's probably like 45 to 50 minutes i didn't time it so uh but we'll come back afterwards and we'll talk a little bit about um that so let's go do that right now and pc boards i've been using this oh i don't know probably um six months or so um i have used many things in the past and this is the best thing that i've ever used um, you remember last year, early last year, uh, we showed you fritzing, which is what I have on the screen right now. And I'm actually going to recreate this. This is something that we did early last year when we were teaching about the uh, MCP 23017 I2C GPIO chip. So this is a board we created. To, you can buy it in the store. Um, I think there's still, I think it's still in the store. Um, but after we're done this drawing, I'm going to recreate it um, and put this board up, the new board I'm going to create up instead. Um, there's lots of things about it that um, Fritzing does okay, and it's free. Fritzing is free. Or Eagle is not free, but you can get Eagle for $69 uh, for the hobbyist. And as long as you're not making money on, on the stuff, you can use Eagle. Uh, we have now purchased the full version of Eagle that we have. Um, but what I want to do is recreate this. You see all these lines. So you see these blue lines going over here and it looks like a wiring diagram, but this is very confusing. Uh, and you see for first thing doesn't do a great job making things square and pretty. And, um, that really, <laughs> that really bothers me. And it's an okay design software. Uh, but Eagle is just so much better. So we're going to recreate this in Eagle and we're going to show you the difference in it. Um, it's going to be a couple segments. The first segment I'm going to walk through, and I'm going to recreate the schematic. 
uh, I'm going to recreate this right here. I printed this out and I have it sitting next to me. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate this whole thing in Eagle. And through parts of the recording, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through things because it's kind of redundant. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. Then I'll fast forward through it and you can watch me do it. Uh, and then I'll come back and I'll explain. And you'll talk a little bit more after that. But when we're done, um, we will be able to see what the next segment is where we actually lay out the PC board itself. But in this uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about basic schematic diagramming, a little bit about Eagle. I mean, you can't really get Eagle until you use it because uh, there's little things it does um, a little differently than some programs. Uh, but I'll try to explain them as I go along. But if I miss something, the best way to learn is just to download a copy of it and try it. I think there's a trial period. I'll have to check in uh, when I do the show. I'll let you know what the trial period is, if there is one uh, to try. Because it's, uh, it's actually it's great software. Um, I'm converting everything from all. I have three. I have my diagrams and or schematics in three different programs, and I'm converting everything over to Eagle as time goes on. So, anyways, without uh, going wasting more time, you know, flap my lips. We're just going to go through this real draw, drawing real quick to show you what we're going to put in. This chip right here is the uh, 23017. So right here, at MCP 23017. We did a whole show on uh, doing using the 23017 as a general purpose I/O for uh, our expansion on the Arduino and I can't remember what the episode was but you can go back through the history and look at that. That was early last year sometime. And then we have our LEDs right here and these are actually resistor arrays so that's one of the things about fritzing is it's not very easy to do things that aren't already in this library over here and that's uh, something that's really easy to do in Eagle. And then of course we have the uh, Arduino on this side we have buttons here for the input uh, like we're using the LEDs for the output and uh, this is actually a great board to learn uh, I2C and GPIO. It's kind of what we created it for is for, mainly for ourselves to figure out uh, the 23017 worked. And actually, we do use this chip now in a few other designs uh, outside of the stuff here on Let's Make It. And then uh, we or we'll talk about the the RGB over here as well. And we're going to rebuild this. So kind of keep this in your mind. We'll come back and look at it when we're done. We'll kind of compare the two different schematics. So let's go ahead and we're going to hide we're going to hide this. All right, so what you see here is what you see in Eagle when you first start. It looks a little bit daunting because it doesn't really ex tell you what to do. Uh, but this is what the control panel looks like. And if you have projects created, you can come in here and you can see projects. I don't generally do them under projects. I just do them as individual files and put them in folders. Um, I've never really adopted the projects thing. The cam jobs are what you can use to actually generate your output. Here's a Gerber output. Uh, we actually have our own that we created for the company that we use. Uh, we went back and forth a few times and actually developed a cam job with them. So I have one that I have stored um, outside of Eagle that I, I use you know, considerably frequently, actually, here, plus here recently. And then you can do some scripts, some user language programs. But the part I really want to get into here is the libraries. One of the things you will find in Eagle is there is an almost unlimited number of libraries for almost anything you can think of. Most manufacturers of electronics have created a library for Eagle. It is like the standard for doing design. So if we scroll down through here, um, you can see these are all of the libraries. Now the library has tons and tons of things in it separately. So you can just see this is what I am using as far as a library goes. But let's just do one real quick here. Let's look at Adafruit, for example. This is one of my favorite libraries. She has lots and lots of stuff in her in the library. Uh, in fact, we're going to use it a lot today. You can see inside of her library, she has all this stuff inside of her library. So much more choice than what you get in uh, in Fritzing. It's almost unlimited, and you can make your own. The libraries are very easy to create. Uh, we have some parts that, that are actually our parts that we de developed that are, are in a library that we created. So we've got experience now doing that. And it was actually much simpler than what I thought. It was a little bit confusing at first, but after I figured it out, it's really quick to go in. And if you find somebody else's uh, library that maybe you don't want the ICSP pins, on your Arduino to be you know, to be wired up, or you want to use that for something else, you can go ahead and copy it, and modify it, and make a different version, variation of it, using you know the same uh, basic library which what you already have. But you see, I'm still inside of a Adafruit library here, and scrolling down. So there's the end of the Adafruit library. So it's huge. But besides the uh, niceties of the libraries and everything, all we want to do right now is we're going to create a new schematic. So to do that's very simple. You go to File. And you go to new and you say schematic, just like that. And 
we come up with a blank sheet. Now I'm going to try to size this for the uh, screen that I have recording here. It always opens up really small, too small for a work area. All right, let me see. I've got it. Kind of got a monitor off to my side here that I'm watching to see if I'm going off the screen or not. And that looks good right there. All right, so here is our blank canvas that we're going to start from. And once you notice one thing right here, this little uh, plus or crosshair right here is the bottom left side of your drawing. You don't have to follow that, uh, but you're going to want to follow that. Uh, Mainly because you make it, make it a habit. Because when you get into designing a PC board side, it's very important that you use this because that's where your PC board size starts and goes this way and goes this way. All right, so the first thing we need to do is add parts. So we're going to go to that library I just talked about, and we're going to start adding parts. So I know where some of these parts are, but we can also search for them. We're going to come in here, though, and um, go, ahead, go ahead and click on right here. Uh, this little thing right here next to the delete is add part and when you hover on this it says add and down at the bottom in the status bar it says add a part so we're gonna do that and what's gonna happen is it's gonna load up the libraries so I know the first thing that I want is an Arduino and element 14 has a great library for Arduinos it's probably the one I use the most and we're gonna come down here and we're going to take the Uno and I actually have uh, some of my own versions of the Uno from them that I've modified slightly just to move uh, some of the pins around where they connect up here. So, but what you see when you click on that is you see a couple things. This is actually considered a package. So here is what it looks like in the schematic, this Arduino Uno image. That's so where we're going to connect all our pins to, and this is what it's going to look like in the design area. And when you design the libraries, uh, let me go over here. Example: Here's the same Arduino with a different no holes thing right here. So you see what changes on the right. See the dr the drill holes are here. And when you go to no holes, it's there. But this change stayed the same. So basically, this is a different package. And I'm going to demonstrate this package concept uh, when we get done with the schematic. I'm actually going to change uh, our MCP20 or yeah, 23017 to a different package. And so you can see live what it does without me making any changes to any wires. So it's one of the cool things also about it. But I'm going to pick the one that, says, that has the holes in it just for, just for fun. Um, so I'm going to double click on this. And at this point, You'll see me carrying around on the screen an Arduino Uno. So I'm just going to place it by clicking. And if I want to place more than one, I can just click again, and it would place it on the, on the screen. But I only need one, so I'm going to stop. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go um, look for the 23017. And now here's where I, I know Adafruit has a 23017 in it. That's probably the one I probably use uh, most of the time. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to scroll down. And here is the 23017, MCP 23017. I could also come down here and search if I wanted to. So here we're going to get into the package concept. We see our general layout right here of the schematic. But as I click on these, you're going to see different packages. So this is uh, a 6x6 six six, uh, package. I think they call it, uh, I don't know what they call this now, um, QFN or something like that. QFN, what does it say right here? Yeah, QFN28. Um, but we don't want to do that one. We want to come down, and here's a surface mount one. Uh, and then we come down. Down here, here's a through hole. Here's a through another through hole with round pins versus the oblong ones. And then we have the SSOP28. Now we use SSOP28s all the time with this, as well as the through holes. In fact, the original board that we did with Fritzing was a through hole design. But for this one, we're actually going to do a source mount because I think it's uh, a, kind of a cool way of doing it. Save some space, and I'm also going to give you a good demonstration of some board layout and swapping parts back and forth. So we're going to click on this. And I just need one of these. So we're going to place one of these. And we're going to go back in the library. We can hit escape or we can click on the library either way. And we're going back into the library. And I need switches. I need tactile switches. And now while I'm in here, I know she has some of these in here as well. So we're going to come down here and single pull, single throw, tactical switch. So that's what it's going to look like. See, she has two different kinds. Uh, this is the kind that actually I know I have here. So I'm going to double click on this. And if you remember the old drawing, okay, this error just came up right here. We're going to talk about that in a second. We're going to show you what that is. I try to place my buttons. So I need a total of 10 buttons. I have eight buttons for the GPIO, one button for reset, and one just a general purpose button uh, that goes directly to the Arduino. Um, so we're going to put in 10 buttons, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. Don't worry about where they are right now. We're going to rearrange it here uh, shortly. Now, the area you got, uh, you saw come up there is because I haven't saved this yet. And I don't know why this happens. It's only it's happening to me. But I'm going to go ahead and going to save this real quick. And we're going to call it, we're going to put it on the desktop. And we're going to call this um, Tally Test 4. All right, so now we see that the error won't come up again. All right, let's see what else we need. We need um, eight LEDs. So we're going to go back over here to the library. And we're just going to pick out a basic LED. And again, I'm just going to pull one out of her library. I think she has some here, LEDs. And I'm going to do surface mount LEDs. So I'm going to do 0805s. I have 0603s and 0805s. But if I'm the one putting the chip on the board, 0603s are just a tiny bit small for me. Uh, so I'm going to pick on the 0805s. There we go. So I need some of these. And I need eight of these. So I'm just going to plop them on the board here. Like I said, we're going to deal with where they're going to go later. I'm just trying to populate it. So there's eight LEDs. I need some resistors. So let's say... Um, I don't know if she has any basic resistors in here. Now let's go look. There's... I don't see anything generic from her. Let me go up top and see. Maybe something up here. I do not see anything. Let me... um. I'm going to search. I know I want 0805 resistors as well, so I'm just going to search for 0805 down at the bottom. And you see I have a bunch of resistors now. Now, this is Deche. Uh, they basically have one for every part number they have. So if you click on this, over here you're going to see um, what it is. This actually is, is valued at 1.21K. It gives you the part number or everything. Um, I may end up actually using one of these just as a generic, but let's keep seeing what we have in here. You can see they have a lot of the resistors in here. So if you know the part number for resistor you can put from them, you can probably find it. But I just want a generic 0805. Yeah, so they're all pretty much the same. So I'm just going to grab one. Uh, it doesn't matter what the value is. And I see how many of these I know I need. I need um, one, two, three, four, five, it looks like. So I need uh, one for the I2C for pulling up or biasing it towards positive uh, for SDA, so SDA, SCL. I have an RGB LED, so I'm going to need three of those as well. I think that's all I need. All right, so I do need a resistor array as well. So I'm going to go do a resistor array. And... Actually, let's look for a resistor. And we'll see if we can find a resistor array. I think I saw one at the, towards the bottom of the... Can you hear my mouse scrolling away? Because this is so big. Let me just jank this to the bottom. I'm pretty sure what I saw was down here towards the bottom. Resistor network... Let's see. Eight. Alright, what's well, the wrong format? I'd like to have a resistor... Uh, a resistor network that's not a through hole. And unfortunately, it's the only one they have for that. Let me see... Uh, here's a 16 by 8 so this is a little different than what our current register our current register has one input or one pin goes to ground or positive or whatever and then eight outputs but this is going to, to accomplish the same thing it's going to be a little bit more uh, wiring but in the end it's actually not that much more so we're going to use this and we need two of these so I'm going to plop them down here and let's see I need an RGB LED yet so let me come back over here and we're going to search for RGB and see what we get. Um, spark fun. Common anode or common cathode? I want common cathode, I believe. I mean, here's the drawing. Let me show what it was. Yeah, it's common cathode. So here's where. This is a through hole, so I'm going to do one thing with through hole here. Um, I don't have any um, tricolor LEDs that are not uh, through holes, so just for our purposes here. Uh, so there's. Look the same to me. All right, so we have one. 
All right, so we're done putting parts. So now we should have all of our parts. Let me just make sure I have everything to go through the oil drawing here. Resistors, two push by. I think we're good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of zoom out. Oh, there's one more thing that's uh, and it's not necessarily a requirement, but um, I like to have it, and it's called a frame. And let me get rid of this. And I know it's under the frame. I like frames just because it makes things nice and neat. Um, you can document things and you can tell the edges of stuff. So it's just a personal thing. But I'm going to use an eight and a half by eleven frame, just like that. So I'm going to select it. Oops, where'd it go? Frame eight and a half by eleven, and I'm going to put it right on the has or the crosshair thingy right here on the document to the bottom left. And now I have a frame. All right, so now we're good to go. Let's kind of uh, bring the whole thing into into view here, and we're going to rearrange things a little bit. So I'm going to first of all move the Arduino, just like so, and I'm going to turn it around so it looks more like you're looking at the Arduino. And the way that I'm doing this, I should probably explain that too, is over here on the left, this this is the move. And in fact, if you hover on it, it says move, and down in the bar at the bottom, it says move an object. If you click on the cr crosshair, every everything has a crosshair in it, and that's how you select it. So, for example, in the case of the Uno, let me turn on my zoom clock. Uh, I click on this, and oh, I click on the plus, like that, and I have it selected, so I can move it around. If I right-click, I'm turning it. You can also, if you just want to turn stuff, you can come up here and use this right here to turn it around as well. And the scrolling in and out is done by the mouse scroll wheel. I just locked my scroll wheel because it was in free flowing mode. So now I locked it so I don't uh, touch it by accident. Also, we'll take uh, our general purpose I.O. and going to move it up here like this as well, very similarly. And let's kind of scroll out um, this button right here, basically, next to the scroll in, zoom in and zoom out, is we'll center it. So I want to create two sections, um, input and an output. So I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to go over here to text. And before I do this, I want to make explain one other thing. Um, Eagle has the concept of layers. So if you're familiar with Photoshop with layers, you'll be able to grasp this concept real quickly. Um, this is layers right here. Now in the schematic, the layers don't mean as much as they, they will when we get over to um, doing the actual PC board layout, because there it's very important. Um, here you have basically nets. And then you also have the documentation, the Grayshouse documentation. So I generally put documentation and stuff under info, but your wiring has to be under nets. But so you're going to see me move things around, and you're going to see me go back and forth. So I want to make sure I explain that. So we're going to click on T for text. And it's going to ask what the text is. And I am going to call the first one input, just like this. And one of the things you're going to notice right here is it says it's going to nets. I don't want it to be a wire, so I'm going to change this to info and then I'm going to place the word input on right here and then I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to do one for output. When you hit escape it goes back one we hit it twice it exits out so we're going to do output and we're going to put it right here just like that. Now it's awful small so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this I which is info it's how you look up properties of something and I'm going to change the first of all, I'm going to change the font to fixed. I'm a fixed font person when it comes to drawings. So, and I'm going to make it size oh 1.15 versus the 0 0.07. So there you see it's a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So this is going to be fixed, and it's going to be 1.15, just like so. Oops, something didn't work out. Oh, uh, one up, one more. 1.15. There we go. Okay, so now we have our sections. Now I need to start moving my stuff around. And we're going to move things in groups. So let's look at one button first. We're just going to move one button. And you see it's kind of turned sideways. That's fine if you like the button to do sideways. I like it to be a push button to be pushed down. So I'm just going to flip it around three times. And there we go. So that's switch 10. But what I can do is if I want to move a group of things, I make sure I'm in the move. And this, this works for everything, not just move. Um, you click in this area right here, define a group, and you drag around the group just like that. And if you right click on this, you now can select move group right here. So we do that, 
and we can move the whole group around. Now, while you can move the group around, you can also turn the whole group. So now I have all my switches turned to the right direction. So let's kind of zoom in here to this area. And one thing about Eagle is wherever your mouse is and you zoom in, it'll zoom in as that spot will always stay on the screen. So I've got a little mess going here. Let me scroll up so you can see where input, the word input is. And I want to grab my first switch and I'm going to use this as an example. So you can't really see where switch one is, I don't believe. Switch three, switch four, five. But let's say I click on one of these and it's the wrong one. I don't want switch six. I can right click and it, oh, I kept it automatically. So let me try to do a better demonstration of this. Um, no, all right, I'll do that a little bit later. I can have, when I put the wires in, it'll be a little easier probably. So let me go ahead and kind of clear things out slightly so I can see what numbers are where. Uh, seven. Okay, here's switch one. So we're going to put switch one right there. And then we're going to look for switch two right there. And you see these wires are coming up here? I don't know why it's doing that, but I don't want those. I will go through and get rid of them. Um, and the way you get rid of them, I'll show you here in a second. Here's switch three. As you come over here to this X, this is delete. And you click on the line, just like that. All right, so there's switch three. Let's see, switch four is right here. And switch five. Switch six. Switch seven. And switch Eight. Let me scroll down a little bit here. And we have switch nine. And we have switch ten. Uh, oh, no, switch nine doesn't go there. Switch nine goes over here. It's going to be a reset or something. We'll have to figure that out later, which one's going to be which. So we need to get those over here. Let me um, kind of get them up out of the way. I'll put them up here. All right, so our switches are kind of placed. And let's do the same thing with the LEDs now. So we're going to Zoom in, let's get rid of this one out of the way. All right, so we have our LEDs, and they're all turned sideways, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, in my case, I don't want to do it that way. I want to flip them around, so I'm going to uh, grab them like this, and I'm going to um, move the group, and I'm going to flip them while I'm moving them, and get them a little closer where they belong. Let's kind of scroll up here, and we're going to place them real quick. So I'm going to do LED 1. And then LED 2 and 3. And you see I can kind of line to the button just to keep them kind of visually the same. You wouldn't have to do that. It's totally up to you. I'm just like things being a little bit visually similar. 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are our buttons. Do so I have them all aligned to the tops? Oh, I believe so. All right, so our buttons are our kind of the right place. Although I think they're a little close to the, the input, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, move. I'm going to move uh, actually both of them. So I'm going to do a group move. The switches should be a little bit more not as I centered to the word input. Well, I like what input's at, so I'm just going to kind of move them a little bit like that. And that gives me more space for the output. So I'll leave the output where it's at. All right, let's figure out what else i got to place here. I have to place a reset switch, which is already here. So I'm just going to basically, what I sometimes just do is just copy the text because it's already the right size and everything. I just click on the copy and then we're going to place this and we're going to go rename it. This is going to be our reset switch. And then I have a general push button. So I'm just going to call it push button. Again, I'm going to click here where it says copy an object. I'm going to click on reset and just drag that over. And I'm going to move down a little bit, although I don't have nothing going in there. I still like to keep a little bit farther away. Uh, and this is just push button. That's what I'm going to do. Push button, just like so. All right, so that makes me need to move everything else around a little bit to make things line up a little neater. So that's too far. That's good. And reset and then I have my LED right here 
my my three color e LED the RGB and it's gonna have some resistors so I'm just gonna kinda line them up here as well and we'll clean this stuff up later I'm just trying to place everything right now and um, like that and then these are gonna be for the I2C and then we have our two resistor arrays and each of these input and output have a resistor array I'm gonna put them right here just like that and I think we're pretty much laid out so now we can get started creating the actual connections so I could very easily take and do I'm gonna do this I'm gonna undo it then let me come up here and we're going to say that this is LED one so I could run a wire just like this and it'd be similar to the first thing. Now the one thing I mentioned before about layers see how it's gray? It should be green. So that tells me I did it wrong. So let me go here. I'm going to delete it now. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to delete this because it should be in nets. So we're going to come in here and we're going to change our layer. Run wire again. Right here's wire to nets. And I'm going to run the same wire just like that and that would work perfectly fine I could do that for all these LEDs and run all these wires to all these LEDs what you'd have in the very end is what we have in fritzing which is wired running everywhere it makes it confusing this is where Eagle has something that is awesome so we're gonna go through I'm gonna delete my runs so we don't have this and I'm going to add a small wire to this side of the LED just like this and one on this side and then I'm going to add a small wire right here just like that and you can now name these and they basically make a bus so here's what we do we come here and we click on name right here define name for an object and we're going to call this one LED1 and we're going to call this one LED1 now watch what happens whenever I do okay on this one it is asking me if I want to connect them together I'm gonna to say yes I do so now what's happened is I have this one and this one connecting even though that they aren't physically connected via the drawing and I'm going to name these so I'm gonna come out here and click on label they're already named I'm gonna label them I should say and that is LED 1 and that is LED 1 so these are connected I could add make this LED 1 and these all three would then be connected so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go through um, and do the LEDs and I'll put it in fast forward through this because it's very much a lot of redundant uh, work here I don't need to you know keep you guys tied up while I go through and do all this redundant work so uh, I'll just fast forward through this section Okay, so I just did these. I'm going to clean up this again. This is just a little bit of me being just a little crazy about the design. So I've labeled all the LEDs. Now I haven't finished over here on the um, 23017. So let me go ahead and I uh, will walk through here again. So basically I'm putting a small wire just like that. So I click and then when I'm done with the wire is I just double click. Double click basically says the wire ends here. If you don't double click you click once it'll keep running like this see how it's running like that or you can escape and it'll it'll quit so basically I'm just putting in a small wire just like this and then I'm gonna come over here and there's this little button it says name and uh, define the name of an object so I'm gonna click on that and this is going to be LED number two 
And since I already have the LED2 created right here, when I press enter, it's going to make sure I want to do that, connect them. Uh, and then I'm going to do LED3. And then LED4. And then LED5. What is that? Five is right here. That's, I'm, you see I had the wrong one highlighted. So let me share this to you. This is where um, I said before, I selected this one, but if this is the wrong one, like if you're in a busy area, if I right click, you see it picks the next one closest. And I right click again, it goes to that one because it's close. And again, it goes to that one. So at this point, I have to click on it because it's highlighted again. So this is LED5. And then we have LED6. Those little things like that you tend to learn the more you use, use it. Um, it's a little hard to teach all that stuff in uh, a short segment like this. All right, so I've named all the LED pins, and then I come down here, and there's this little thing right here, and it says, um, it's not letting me. Basically, if I hover on it, it's going to say that you can put a label on it. That's what this LBABC thing is. So I'm going to click on the line. That's what I want. So click it again, and then there is LED2, LED3. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I gotta move that, so I come back over here and do move. And select again. LED3. Alright, let's so come back down here for label. LED4. And it's acting funny all of a sudden. I think it's because I'm doing a screen record. Um, and come back over here. There it works. There it worked normal. It should move around like that. LED seven. LED. Oops, I moved it around again. All right. So there's our LEDs. Uh, these are all connected now to over here. But what we haven't finished yet is the resistor side. Now, in the fast forward, you may have seen me label these LED eight or one through eight, and then an R at the end for resistor. So I need to come down here, and I'll do this through fast forward too. But I'm going to go to this resistor right here and add in all the same thing I did here. One side goes to ground and one side goes to the LEDs. So I'll do that in fast forward mode again. Okay, so there I did the resistor array. So the one thing I probably should have done in the beginning, and I haven't done this yet, and I'll go do that right now, is uh, I haven't connected the ground or the five volts to either the Arduino or the um, 23017. So I'm going to do that. You know, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. I mean, I generally try to do it just to remember it when I first do it. But uh, so we're going to add five volts and ground to this. And on the Arduino, there's multiple grounds. I generally connect them all to ground. And then there's 5 volts right here. And there's also a ground on the ICSP. And there's also a ground over here. And I put them all to ground. So let me go ahead and, and name these uh, really quick. So here we have ground, which is already a bus for, so it's going to ask me. And then there's 5 volts, which I haven't done yet, so the first time I do it, it's not going to ask me for anything. But when I do 5 volts here, it's going to see there's another one and say don't want to connect them. So yes, and then we have our grounds. And we have our grounds. And a ground. There's lots of grounds over here. Ground. And a ground. All right, so let me go label these while I'm thinking about it. So we have our 5 volt pin there, have our ground pin there, 5 volts, ground, 
ground. And I'm going to turn this one just like that. Ground. And then we have ground. All right. So what we have done is our output sections are done. We have our LEDs connected to the MCP23017. And if we come back and scroll down here, we have the LEDs connected on the other side to a resistor array, which goes to ground. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the button side. And while I do the button side, I'm going to fast forward as it's quite boring just watching me draw lines. But I'm going to be doing the exact same thing that I was just doing where I'm going to name everything and label it. And then when I'm done doing that, uh, I'm going to go and do the resistor array as well. And when I'm done doing that, we'll come back and we'll see where we are. Okay, so I got the switches uh, all connected up, and we're going to, I'm going to make one other change here real quick, and this is, again, more cosmetic than anything, is I don't like these being different distance than the ones on the right, so it literally is going to be something that simple. All right, so let's kind of uh, scroll out here a little bit. We have our input and outputs connected. Well, no, we don't, exactly. You notice these switches don't go anywhere. They're connecting to the resistor, but that's it. I haven't finished this side. So I'm going to kind of do that now, which should be pretty quick. And then we have just a few sections left, and then we'll be done. Let me go ahead and add these in here. And as you can tell so far, look how clean everything is so far. It's documented, uh, or for the most part, it's documented. I still have a few little things here and there, but we'll get in there and clean it up. So this is switch number one. And we have switch two. Switch three. Switch four. Switch five. And you can always come back and rename these too. Just because I'm going through doesn't mean I can't go back. If I make a mistake with one, um, it's no problem. As long as you haven't made the board, you're you're good to change everything. And you can always remake another one as well. Switch eight. All right, so let me label these, and then we'll be done connecting our switches up. So our input section will be completely done. All right, switches are all done. Let me save this. All right, saved. Okay, so let's do the reset button. So we're gonna do something very similar to reset. With the Arduino, you know we bring the reset down to ground to do a reset. So we're going to uh, run a couple little pins here, just like this. And we're going to, well, we need to put one on the reset while we're here. So let's add one to reset. So we've added that to reset, and we're going to name, I'll name this side ground. And we're going to create a new bus called Reset. So here we go. We're going to put it Reset. It doesn't exist yet, so I won't get anything for this one. But when I put this one in, it's going to ask me to want to connect it. And I do. So let's label these real quick. So we have Ground here. Just like that. Reset there. And we have Reset up here. And let's see, we have our push button. Let's see, look at the drawing here and see where did push button go before. It went to D8, 
So we're going to do something very similar here too. We're going to go ahead and connect up wires like this. And I need D8. So we're going to run on the D8. And we're going to name these. This side is going to be ground. This side is going to be D8 for digital pin 8. That makes sense, right? D8 and D8. Just like that. And we're going to label these. We already have our buttons connected. This is just the labeling process. All right, and D8. All right, so well, it's a lot here. All right, let's go down, and we haven't connected the I2C stuff yet. So let's do that. We're going to um, create an I2C bus for SCL and SDA. SCL, SDA, and we're going to name these I2C, SCL, I2C, SCL, and I2C, SDA. And do the same thing up here. I to see SCL. And it didn't ask me to connect, so something's not right. Something's not spelled right. That's not there we go. It's ISC. I to C S C O. Good. And then I to C S D A. And we connect it. So let's label these. And then our our we are connected. We still gotta do one more thing with the I to C bus because we want to kind of bias the voltage high, although it probably wouldn't matter as much on the current um, board because it's not really going anywhere. All right, you see, this is going to drive me nuts. This would work perfectly fine, but I have to um, rearrange the Arduino because these labels are off the off the thing. And I didn't get everything, so let me go back and do it again. I want to move. group. All right, that'll do it. All right, so we have these two resistors down here, and they are the wrong values, so I'm going to change the value. So to do that, I go to I for info, kind of like properties, if you're used to other things that have properties. And uh, this value is going to be a 1.5K. And we could say R1 is fine. Uh, you can rename any part you want anytime. Uh, I generally go through afterwards and do that, but for our cases here, R1 is just fine. And I need to change this one, 1.5K. Okay. And a couple things here. You see the stuff's overlapping. We're going to work on that after we're done with this. Um, and we're, we're going to, oops, I'll do that. We're just going to draw a line. And we bias I2C to 5 volts, so. Like so, and we're going to name one side's five volts. And the other side is I2C SDA. I spelled it wrong again, didn't I? I2C SDA. There, I got it. And I2C SCL. I2C SCL. All right, so let's label these, and then we're going to clean this up a little bit. It's called smashing, which I don't quite understand why they call it smashing, but you're going to smash these, and it's a little symbol right here, and it separates the name and value pair. So right now, if you move that around, they all move together. If you do that, you saw the little plus uh, handle things. I guess 1.5K doesn't have one. If I click here, it does have one now. So I don't need to know 1.5K twice, so what I'm going to do is actually delete um, this one right here. And it doesn't change anything, it just does, doesn't display the value. I think uh, just one of these makes perfect sense, and I'm then going to take these and center them. Like so. So that makes it nice and neat. So what I want to do is also I want to label this, so I'm going to grab this. And I'm just going to call it I2C bias. Let's, or I'm going to call it I2C lift, I guess. I2C lift, because it's lifting to 5 volts. And 
I generally do everything up case if I can. All right, so it's not quite centered. All right, so the only thing we have left is, and this is not centered either, is this LED. And this is where, this here I'm going to go. I'm going to smash this stuff first because uh, I'll change its values. These are going to be, um, we'll use 270 ohm resistors. Oops, that's the one I changed. Okay. 270 and 270. And it's just good to change these values because it does show up in the parts list. But I do not need all these, so I'm going to smash these as well. We're smashed there. We're going to actually get rid of two of these values just because it's in the way. And then we're going to move this. And I'm actually going to put it like this. And let's move this over so that it's aligned. All right. So now I'm going to, I'm actually going to run real wires this time. Like I did, like I showed you in the very beginning. So let's go over here. We're going to run a wire. And we're going to run it from here to here. And from here to here. And here to here. So these are all connected. I want to run wires to these as well. And in this case, it's going to be, let's see, this goes to ground on this side. So I want to name this one ground, just like that. And then on this side, let's see, where's it go? It goes to D2, 3, and 4. So we're going to just name these D2, D2. D3 and D4. So that also means we need to run wires out of 2, 3, and 4. So we do this. We run 2, 3, and 4. And then we're going to name these. Here's D2. D3. D4. All right, so let's label these. D2, D3, D4, ground, D2, D3, D4. All right, uh, let's add some text here. RGB LED. All right, and just to make things a little bit less crowded over here, let's move these two down just a little. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I think we are actually done with this segment now. So let's kind of review what we did. We've uh, put all the parts in connected them all via bus instead of running individual wires. Uh, and let me go show you the whole schematic. So there's the whole thing. And it's nice and labeled and very easy to follow. So let's again compare this to what we had before with fritzing. So we can go from this, what looks like a total mess, to this nicely documented uh, schematic. That's the nice thing about Eagle. Plus, you can have multiple sheets. You can go here and you can add more sheets. So if your schematic is too big to fit on one page, uh, you can have multiple sheets, and they all work uh, together just fine. Now, here's something I want to show you before we go for this segment, and then we'll be done. And then uh, I know it's been a long, a long segment. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on the PC board side now. So it's going to ask if I want to create one. I said yes. So I'm going to make it the same size, almost the same size. As what we currently have. 
So here's what it's done. This basically is our working area here. See the, the crosshairs? This is our working area. You can define it bigger, smaller, or whatever. This is just a general working starting area. And you just drag the parts over here and place them where you want. So in this case, what I want to demonstrate over here, and I can go into great detail, is I want to demonstrate part replacement. So we have put in this 23017 all right, right there. And uh, I'll kind of zoom in on it so we can see it is a surface mount chip currently. What I want to do is I'm going to come over here to the schematic and I'm going to go to this replace button right here. And I'm going to go back up to Adafruit where I got that from. Let me turn off my scroll lock. Here we go. I'll click no more. And I'm going to go down to the 23017 MCP 23017 and I'm going to pick the through hole just like that. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to replace this chip right here by clicking on it. Just like that. I just replaced it. Let me go back and look at the schematic now. Or look at the board. Look, it's no longer surface mount. It's changed. That is the cool thing about uh, Eagle as well with the libraries. So I just converted it to a, to a through hole chip versus the surface mount chip that I had before. I'll go back and I'll put it back. So I'm going to come back over here I'm going to go to replace again, and I want to go back to the SSOP 28. I double click, I replace the chip just like that. It's replaced, and I go back into the drawing, and we're back to the surface mount again. So that is a, a nice feature. Uh, I can convert this whole schematic to another board, a copy schematic, change the parts out as quick as I just did, and relay out the parts and have a through hole board versus a surface mount board. Very cool, very cool stuff. So um, this is the end of this segment. We will go back to the show, and then we'll have this the following segment. We're going to actually take that PC board and lay it out and uh, make a PC board out of it. So we'll do that um, in the next segment. Thank you. All right, so this segment is going to be teaching you a little bit about the Eagle CAD or Eagle design software for creating schematics and PC boards. And I've been using this, oh, I don't know, probably um, six months or so. Okay, so sorry about that rerun right there. That's a long segment, but actually EagleCAD is probably the best CAD software I've ever used before. And I've used quite a few of them, some on the PC and some on Linux as well. Um, and I'm very happy with um, <laughs> with EagleCAD. Uh, like I said, I've got a, a few more things to convert over. Um, I actually converted the one over during these two segments. Uh, we'll do segment two um, next week. But... Since we've been doing this for almost, well, we've been going 58 minutes now, um, I'm going to go ahead. I want to show you a few other things. Um, I've mentioned before about some quadcopter stuff. So I got in some parts, and that's what's in these boxes here. This is uh, an actual quadcopter, and I can't remember which brand this is. It was like $12 to buy the to buy this chassis. There's no motor or anything with it. I got the motors on the way here, uh, but that's one of the chassis. And then... Um, I got a hexacopter chassis already as well, and then I got this other quadcopter, which is looks like uh, a DJI. It's not a DJI; it's a knockoff uh, out of China. But uh, here's the four sides to that, and then these center pieces are actually kind of interesting because you can actually saw this is like basically a real thick PC board, and you can see the solder points on there, so you can put your power and everything directly in these holes instead of running wires everywhere. So you basically solder your motor controllers or your speed controllers into this. And um, that's something we're going to be working on soon. I also got an open source um, control unit as well. And uh, it's not hooked up yet. I just got it like um, Friday, I guess, and this is Monday. It's still in a little baggy. But uh, that is, um, parts are starting to come in. So like I said, I also have a DJI that I'm putting together. Uh, it's a hexacopter. So it's, and it's actually using the DJI uh, Nazo controller. So. We're going to be doing a couple different things with that, but the part is starting to come in. So we got a few things coming up in the next couple of months here. Segment-wise, it's going to be really fun. Next week, we're going to go ahead and finish the Eagle, Eagle CAD. Um, I may have some quadcopter stuff put together, depending on uh, how things come on. And uh, in the during the segment in the chat room, Jim asked about the B project. And actually, you see sitting behind me a solar panel. Oops, I'm just knocking TV off the wall. This solar panel is for the B project. So my Bs are far enough away that I don't have power down there. So the simplest thing for me to do is to power them 
uh, power the sensors with via solar. Now, in my case, um, so I'm, I'm starting to build the sensors now, and for it to report back, I'm just going to basically take an Arduino for each beehive and a Raspberry Pi I'm going to use for the communication. So they're going to communicate the Raspberry Pi through CAN bus, which I'm developing all the all the uh, shields for CAN bus now. And uh, they will trans. Basically, I'm doing a shield for the Arduino that has sensor and CAN bus on, and then also doing a CAN bus uh, shield for the Raspberry Pi. And they will uh, allow them to communicate. Raspberry Pi will store it if it can't get to the network. Although I should be able really to get network from my house down to there. It isn't that far away uh, with a decent antenna? So, but this is, we're going to go through charge controllers and how to build a solar system as well, and doing the Beehive project. So we're, that's another segment we're going to do is setting. Uh, uh, this is basically a, a 230 watt uh, panel. Should be able to charge the battery nicely. And from what I can figure it out by my calculations, the battery that I got should last. Um, I think I figured two and a half days if I got if I had to run two Arduino's and two Arduino Unos and a Raspberry Pi. So, um, but that was not including any kind of wireless communication and stuff like that. So I could be a little underestimating it. So I have all the charge controllers. I got that stuff now. I got the battery. So we'll be working on that as another segment coming up. Um, two weeks from now, I think I'm going to do a segment on creating libraries for the Arduino. So we've never really done a segment on creating libraries. And this past week, uh, I was talking with somebody. And as you've seen some of the things we do here with the switching products that we make in the, in the camera controllers and everything else. And with switching products, we have a, a piece of software that goes in between our hardware and a switcher because we need something to translate. So the one switcher we use is Ethernet based. So it could actually be directly communicated by these boxes. So I've been wanting to actually have it directly communicate from our boxes right to the switching device instead of going through um, the ATEM remote program that we use to do that. And I think I'm gonna create the library. I have the library created in .NET, but I think I just need to translate it over to the Arduino. So I'm gonna do a whole segment on creating libraries. So in the next couple of weeks, I plan on having that written as well. And I'll do a segment on creating libraries. So we have a bunch of things kind of planned up. Bob, I did talk to Bob while the segment was running and uh, he does not have the TV out ready for today. So he's gonna keep working with it a little bit more and maybe we'll have it ready for next week. If not though, I got a segment for next week. Uh, already kind of planned. It's already been recorded, actually. I recorded it right after I did the one we just just watched. So um, we got a lot of things coming up in that, and I have a couple other fun projects for myself for around the house and things I was working on as well. I want to do some shows around using like Android and Arduino together. Uh, so I have some projects I've been kind of playing with that. Uh, so there's a bunch of little things I have kind of in my queue, and I'm starting to line them up. And you see, like, this segment this week, and the quadcopter stuff starting to come in, so we'll do segments on that. And I'll probably record that as well, uh, just because if I'm assembling it, I don't, I'm don't. i going to kind of fast-forward through as well. I don't want to see you sit around and be completely bored watching me assemble a quadcopter or maybe <laughs> try to assemble a quadcopter, as the case may be. So uh, it'd be, uh, I think it's good just to record it, and then I'll fast-forward through sections and stop and kind of comment like I did with this last one. Uh, this last one was a little bit longer than what I had planned on it being, and um, that's just the way it is. It takes a little while to go through and, and draw a schematic and explain it all out. I did check while the ticket was running also. There is a free version of Eagle, but it's very limited. If you want the Eagle Lite version, it's $69. So that's like your, um, how do they describe it? Um, like, well, that's not a hobbyist. Hobbyist is something different. Eagle Lite allows you one schematic sheet, two signal layers, which is you know, front and back, and a board size limited routing area of 100 by 80 millimeters. So, and the free version, let me see what it is. Um, uh, can go far enough back. The free version limits, it's the same size board, limited two signal layers, one sheet. I don't know what the difference is then. It looks like this looks the freeware and a sixty nine dollar version are the same. Something has to be different, but basically you can download Eagle and you should be able to open up the schematics. I'm going to put a couple more schematics, like I said, uh, next week. Uh, in there, we have some of our button boards. I'm going to throw a couple of those in there so you can kind of play with some things, move them around, and buttons. One of our breakout boards for our Arduino, so you'll see an actual shield type of design as well. Um, and then the one I just did, I'll put out there as well next week, uh, in next week's show, in the show notes. This week, well, I will put out the PDF I just did because I know it's kind of hard to see on the screen, uh, but you can maybe kind of follow along if you print the PDF if you get lost in there. But uh, if you're 
into wanting to start design circuits and PC boards, go download Eagle and try it. It's a great, it's a great product. I cannot highly recommend it highly enough uh, as, a, as a good product. All right, so Bob, like I said, Bob and I talked. Uh, since he wasn't didn't really have anything and he knew the segment was running and it was going to be kind of long, he decided to kind of skip after this week, which is perfectly fine. Uh, spend some time with his family, which is great. Uh, next week we'll be back at 9 p.m. on Monday night, and we will do the second part of the segment, and maybe Bob will have his TV out ready by then. Um, and we'll see what else we can get in. We'll see what parts I come in and see what else I can work on. Uh, next as well i do appreciate you hanging in there through the long segment and telling your friends and spreading the word about us we definitely appreciate all that uh and we do have a just a reminder we do have a google plus community um there's been a lot of comments on the websites recently and all through, through also through email but you might want to try the google plus community if we get that built up other people can help you out and make it more interactive and you won't be waiting on me for a week to answer my answer your email so uh unfortunately that's part of life sometimes all right, everybody. Thank you for hanging out on Monday night with us. We'll see you next Monday. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.